5.1 Use Properties of Exponents Your cute comic for the day. Let's talk about the properties of exponents. Here we'll let a and b be real numbers and m and n will be integers. So remember integers can be positive or negative but they're not fractions. And so if we do the product of powers that says if we have the same bases then we add the exponents. So same bases add the exponents. An example of that would be 5 to the third times 5 to the negative 1 power. Same basis, so you add the exponents. 5 squared, which is 25. The power of a power says that if you do a to the n power and raise it to the nth power, that means that you multiply the exponents. So let me show you why this works. Let's say we have 3 squared and we're going to cube it. Well, cubing it means you do 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared. You see, so I have it 3 times and that's why I multiply 2 times 3 and I get 3 to the 6th power. And I can just leave my answer like that, that's fine. If I have AB to the M power, well that's going to be AB times AB times AB times AB, however many M times. So that's just going to be A to the M power times B to the M power. Let me show you an example again. Let's do now, let's do 2 times 3 to the third power. Well that would be 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. And you'll see that we do 2 cubed times the 3 cubed. Again, I could leave my answer like that. I'm fine with that. I don't have the same basis, so I cannot add exponents or anything like that. Okay, now let's look at negative exponents. a to the negative m is defined as 1 over a to the m power. And I'm going to actually explain why this works after I do the next two properties. So hold on for one minute. I'm just going to say here, let's make sure that a does not equal 0 because thou shalt not divide by 0 in this class. So for an example, if I had 7 to the negative 2 power, that would just be 1 over 7 squared or... 1 over 49. Anything to the 0 power is 1. That's about it for that one. So even if I had something like 0 0.054382 to the 0 power, it would still be 1. Now, if I have the same basis and I'm dividing, I subtract exponents. Just like if I had the same basis and I was multiplying, I add the exponents. Now I'm going to subtract the exponents. So I have a to the m minus n. Again, in this one, since I'm doing a division, I better write a does not equal 0. So I just want to explain something right here. All right, let's look at this. I have a to the m power. Couldn't I rewrite this as a to the m times 1 over a to the n power? right? Because I'm dividing, so I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. That works. And didn't I just say that 1 over a to the n power would be a to the negative n? So I have a to the m times a to the negative n power. And since I have the same basis now, I could just add the exponents. And you see how I get that a to the m minus n power? And so I just said that I was going to explain this one better. So I could similarly explain it as, let's see, I have 1. 1 is the same thing as a to the 0 power. a to the 0 over a to the m equals, let's see, that would be a to the 0 times 1 over a to the m or a to the 0 times a to the negative m, and then I would just get a to the 0 minus m, which is a to the negative m power. And so that is how I would prove that one. Now, you do not need to know 
either of these two proofs. If you don't want to write them down on your paper, you do not need to. But I just wanted to show them to you. Um, and maybe at the end of the lesson, you'll look back and it will make more sense. Again, in this class, I don't like you to have to memorize anything. I like it to all make sense. So whether this made sense now or we need to practice it in class and we'll discuss it then again, I don't care. I just want it to make sense by the end. In this problem here, I'm going to use the same idea that I did here. Oops, and I see a typo. This should be a B here. So I'm going to do A to the M over B to the M power. And in this one, my B cannot be equal to 0 because I don't want to divide by 0. And so let's just do an example. 4 over 7 squared would just be 4 squared over 7 squared or 16 over 49. And I forgot to do an example for this one. Why don't we do one that looks super tricky, but it's really not. 6 to the negative 3 over, let's say, 6 to the negative 6. Again, it's very important that I have the same bases, which I do. If I have the same bases, I can subtract the exponents. So minus 3 minus a minus 6 is plus 6, 6 to the third power. I could leave it just like that. Okay, so those are my basic properties, and now I'm just going to play with them. Let's evaluate this one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this negative 3 squared, and I'm going to cube it times 5, and I'm going to cube that also. So in this one, the negative... You see how I don't have the negative 3, the quantity squared? I just have the opposite of 3 squared, and then I'm cubing it. So that means I do the negative times a negative times a negative. And that's still a negative, because I have a negative cubed. is still a negative. And then I have my 3 squared cubed, so 3 to the 2 times 3 power times 5 cubed. So now I have negative 3 to the 6 power times 5 cubed. I do not have the same bases, so I cannot multiply. And I'm fine with you leaving your answer just like that. If you wanted to evaluate this on your calculator, the way you would do that is you would do 3, and you would use this little button that looked like this. Okay, that means the power button. So 3 to the 6th power, and then you would do times, which is that button, times 5, to the third power, and you could have the negative sign out here if you wanted to. And if you did that, you should get negative 91125. But again, I'm fine with you leaving your answer like that because we're really just practicing exponents here. In this next problem, there are multiple ways to do this, but I usually like to make the power positive. In order to make the power positive, I just flip these things around, right? So if I wanted to have this squared, I just move everything around. So I put this down there and I bring this up here because I know that a to the negative m power is just 1 over a to the m power. So I just flip it. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. I just made it positive. So now I have 3 to the 2 times 2 over 1 to the 4 times 2. So 3 to the 4th power over 1 to the 8th power, and 1 to the 8th power is still 1. So my final answer is just 3 to the 4th power. Or, let's see, 3 times 3 is 9, and so that would be 81. And the way I deconstructed this one actually in my head was, I thought to myself, well, that's just 3 squared squared, right? And so then I could just easily do 9 squared is 81. So I actually just used the exponent properties to help me do 3 to the 4th power really easily in my head. A Federal Reserve gold bar weighs 400 Troy ounces. What is the weight of 250,000 of the gold bars? Well, I'm going to just use scientific notation to solve this problem because I don't want to deal with um, all these zeros at the end. And so 400 is the same thing as 4 times 10 squared. And 250,000 is the same thing as 2.5 times, let's see, 
10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fifth power, right? And so if I multiply those two things together, because I want to know what is a weight of 250,000 of those, so I'm going to multiply them together. Well, I'm going to multiply the 4 times the 2.5, and let's see, 25 times 4 would be 100, so 2.5 times 4 would just be 10 times, and then I have 10 to the same basis, add the exponents, so I have 10 times 10 to the seventh power, and so that would be, let's see, 10 is the same thing as 10 to the first, times 10 to the seventh, which is 10 to the one plus seven, or 10 to the eighth power, and my answer was in ounces. Now honestly, if I wanted to do this problem in my head, I wouldn't have done scientific no notation. This is how I would have done it. 400 times 250,000. I would have started with four times 25, and four times 25 is 100. And then I just would have tacked on the zeros. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. So let's put our comma so it's easier to read. One, two, three, one, two, three. And so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero. So that's 10 to the eighth power. And so I would have gotten the same answer. Now let's go ahead and evaluate these. So same basis, just add the exponents, two minus three plus eight, which is negative one, so y to the seventh power. Again, in this one, I wanna make this power positive first, so I'm gonna just flip it. Okay, and now you have two options. You can make this power positive, or you could multiply first. Negative six over m cubed, and now I'm gonna bring this guy down there, so I make everything positive. And that's my final answer. In this one, this has gotta go down there to make it a positive exponent. So I have the y to the fifth on the top, I have the x squared on the bottom, and the z cubed on the bottom. And that's all I can do on that one. So, you cannot have negative exponents in your final answer if you haven't picked up on that by now. What is the simplified form? So in this one, let me just rewrite it first. Before I go multiplying things, I always like to try and see if I can simplify my life first and break this down first. I'm gonna look inside and I'll see that I have the same bases here. And so I'm gonna try and combine those before I go any further. So I have an x cubed on the bottom and an x squared on the top. That just means that I have one x remaining on the bottom. And then I also realize that I have the y squared and the y to the negative one. So I'm gonna bring this y to the negative one down there. And so that would mean that I would have y cubed in the bottom. And now I actually have nothing left on the top, but that's just fine. And so now I'm gonna cube each thing. So I have one cubed over, now I have to do each thing, two cubed, x cubed, and then that y cubed, I've got a cube also. And so one cubed is just one, and then two cubed is eight, x cubed, y, now I would multiply three times three and I get nine, and that is my final answer. Now it says the radius of Jupiter is about 11 times greater than the radius of Earth. So why don't we call the radius of Earth, re, and then the radius of Jupiter is going to be, it says the radius of Jupiter is 11 times greater. 11 times the radius of the Earth. How many times greater is Jupiter's volume than Earth's volume? Hmm, so we really gotta think about this and not just be tempted to say, well, it's greater. Now, how do we find the volume? Now, all these things, Earth, it looks like a sphere, right? So the volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed. So in order to find the volume of Earth, for example, you would do that the volume of Earth is just equal to four-thirds pi times the radius of Earth and cube it. And now if you found the volume of Jupiter, you would do four-thirds 
pi radius of Jupiter cubed. But we said that the radius of Jupiter is 11 times the radius of Earth. So if we substituted that there, 11 times the radius of Earth is equivalent to the radius of Jupiter, right? And so now look what happens. I have 4 thirds pi times 11 cubed times radius of Earth cubed. So again, in this problem, I'm trying to compare the volume of Earth to the volume of Jupiter. So both of these have that 4 thirds pi in it. So I'm going to just leave that hanging out. and I'm not going to touch it, but I'm going to see what happens here. I have 11 cubed. 11 cubed is 1, 3, 3, 1. So you'll see if we compare this equation with this equation, it's the same here, same pi, same radius earth cubed, and the only difference is that it is 1, 3, 3, 1 times this. So it says how many times greater is it? The answer would be 11 cubed or 1, 3, 3, 1 times greater. Now that's a tricky one, but don't worry, we're going to do it again right here. And this is also like a common type of thing that you would see on the SAT. So it's very important that we get it down. If you double the length of one side of a cube, okay, let's look at a cube first. So here's a cube. All right, so if we have an x by x by x cubed, then the volume of the cube is just x cubed. That's normal. But it says if you double the length of one side of the cube. So now let's look at our new bigger cube with one of the side lengths doubled. Okay, so now this is 2x. That means that this is also 2x and this is also 2x because it's still a cube. So now the volume, instead of just being x cubed, is going to actually be 2x cubed. And so we have to do the 2 cubed times the x cubed. And so we get 8x cubed. So how many times greater? This is actually the same thing that we just did in the last one. See if you can break down the other one. The x cubed is the same, so this is 8 times greater, and that would be my answer to this one. Increase by a factor of 2 cubed, which equals 8. So we've got to be real careful when I double one side, it doesn't just double the volume. Since volume is in units cubed, when I double one side length, since my volume Remember, volume is in units cubed. That's why I'm taking my 2 and I'm cubing it. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.